He had recently introduced the faceless assessment and faceless appeal. I now seek to take further steps to simplify the tax administration, ease compliance, and reduce litigation. Relief to senior citizens. I begin my direct tax proposals by offering my pranam to our senior citizens. Many of them, despite having foregone several basic necessities of their own, have strived to build our nation. Now in the 75th year of independence of our country, when we continue our endeavor with renewed vigor, we shall reduce compliance burden on our senior citizens who are 75 years of age and above. For senior citizens who only have pension and interest income, I propose exemption from filing their income tax returns. The paying bank will deduct the necessary tax on their income. Reduction in time for income tax proceedings. This is a very key announcement, if you, if you ask me. Honorable Speaker, presently an assessment can be reopened up to six years and in serious tax fraud cases for up to 10 years. As a result, taxpayers have to remain under uncertainty for a very long time. I therefore propose to reduce this time limit for reopening of assessments to three years from the present six years. In serious tax evasion cases too, only where there is, only, only where there is evidence of concealment of income of 50 lakh or more in a year. In serious tax evasion cases too, only where there is evidence of concealment of income of 50 lakh or more in a year can the assessment be reopened up to 10 years. Even this reopening can be done only after the approval of the principal chief commissioner, the highest level of income tax department. Setting up the dispute resolution committee. Honorable Speaker, it has been the resolve of this government to reduce litigation which masks the present taxation system. The government came out with the direct taxation Vibhat Se Bishwa scheme to give taxpayers an opportunity to settle long pending disputes and be relieved to further strain on their time and resources. The response from taxpayers has been the best ever as over 1,10,000 taxpayers have already opted to settle tax disputes of over 85,000 crores under the scheme. To further reduce litigation for small taxpayers, I propose to constitute a dispute resolution committee for them, which will be faceless to ensure efficiency, transparency, and accountability. Anyone with a taxable income up to 50 lakh and disputed income up to 10 lakh shall be eligible to approach the committee. Faceless ITAT. For ease of compliance and to reduce discretion, we are committed to make the taxation processes faceless. The government has already introduced faceless assessment and appeal this year. The next level of income tax appeal is the income tax appellate tribunal. I now pro propose to make this tribunal faceless. We shall establish a national faceless Income Tax Appellate Tribunal Center. All communication between the tribunal and the appellant shall be electronic. Where personal hearing is needed, it shall be done through video conferencing. Relaxations to NRI. When non-resident Indians return to India, they have issues with respect to their accrued incomes in their foreign retirement accounts. This is usually due to mismatch in taxation period. They also face difficulties in getting credit for Indian taxes in foreign jurisdictions. I propose to notify rules for removing their hardship of double taxation. Exemption from audit. Currently, if your turnover exceeds one crore, you have to get your accounts audited. 
In February 2020 budget, I had increased the limit for tax audit to five crores for those who carry out 95% of their transactions digitally to further incentivize digital transactions and to reduce compliance burden, I propose to increase this limit for tax audit for such persons from five crores to 10 crores. <laughs> Relief for dividend. In the previous budget, I had abolished the dividend distribution tax in order to incentivize investment. Dividend was made taxable in the hands of shareholders. Now, in order to provide ease of compliance, I propose to make dividend payment to rate and invit exempt from TDS. Further, as the amount of dividend income cannot be estimated correctly by the shareholders for paying advance tax, I propose to provide the advance that I propose to provide that advance tax liability on dividend income shall arise only after the declaration or payment of dividend. Also for the foreign portfolio investors, I propose to enable deduction of tax on dividend income at lower treaty rate. Attracting foreign investment into infrastructure sector. In the last budget, for attracting foreign investment in the infrastructure sector, we had granted 100% tax exemption subject to certain conditions to foreign sovereign wealth funds and pension funds on their income from investment in, in, in Indian infrastructure. We have noticed that few of such funds are facing difficulties in meeting some of the uh, conditions. In order to ensure that a large number of funds invest in India, I propose to relax some of these conditions relating to prohibition on private funding, restriction on commercial activities, and direct investment in infrastructure. In order to allow funding of infrastructure by issue of zero coupon bonds, I propose to make notified infrastructure debt funds eligible to raise funds by issuing tax efficient zero coupon bonds. Affordable housing affordable housing and rental housing. This government sees housing for all and affordable housing as priority areas. In July 2019 budget, I provided an additional deduction of interest amounting to 1.5 lakh for loan taken to purchase an affordable house. I propose to extend the eligibility of this condition by one more year to 31st March 2022. The additional deduction of 1.5 lakh shall therefore be available for loans taken up to 31st March 2022 for the purchase of affordable houses. Further, to keep up the supply of affordable houses, I propose that the affordable housing projects can avail a tax holiday for one more year till 31st March, 19, uh, 31st March 2022. These are available now for projects also. We are committed to promote supply of affordable rental housing for migrant workers. For this, I propose to allow tax exemption for notified affordable rental housing projects. Tax incentives to IFSC. As I mentioned in part A of the speech, the government is committed to making the International Financial Services Center in Gibbs City a global financial hub. In addition to the tax incentives already provided, I propose to include, among others, tax holiday for capital gains for aircraft leasing companies, tax exemption for aircraft lease rentals paid to foreign lessors, tax incentive for relocating